Hi there, it's Marzena. This is another project that has been sitting in my sketchbook and then on my workshop for way too long. But today is the day, because I really wanted to do something creepy, sad and relaxing. You heard me right. So let me show you how I made this dark and downhearted siren. Let's dive in, pun intended. I wanted this figurine to look sad, but I also wanted the sharp face features, so I chose Golia Yelps as a base. Her face sculpt is not my favorite to work on, but as a doll itself, she was and always will be my favorite. The preparations went as follows. Cutting the hair as short as possible. Submerging the head in a freshly boiled water for about one minute. Gently removing the head from the neck bag. Extracting the remaining hair plugs from the inside of the head through the neck hole. Wiping the factory face and sculpt paint off with 100% acetone. And the last phase of preparing the base doll, head shrinking. It's not mandatory, it's just something I always do to make the proportions a bit better. I'm planning on making a little head shrinking tutorial in the future, so if you're interested, stay tuned. To reconnect the shrunken head with the body, I just had to widen the neck hole, slim down the neck and trim down the neck back. A little warming up with a hair dryer and I popped the head back on the body. I smoothed out the head to neck transition and the doll was ready for some real customizing action. I turned my girl into a cozy burrito and I drilled two holes in her head, one in each ear. Then I glued in two pieces of wire with a little loop at the end. I placed the wires symmetrically because those will be the reinforcement for the new pair of ears. Time for my good old friend epoxy sculpt. Because the head is pretty small and the face features sharp, I decided that I need bigger ears to balance the design out. Because you know, mermaid in my world, that means a pretty big tail on the bottom part. I chose a fin-like shape for the ears and when epoxy cured completely I gave them a quick sanding treatment to smooth out the transition between epoxy and the vinyl of the head. It was finally time for the face-up, so I sprayed the head with three layers of Mr. Super Clear varnish. This step prepares the surface of the head for pastels and pencils. It becomes more paper-like and gives a better grip for our pigments. My favorite pastels to work on customizations with are definitely pan pastels. The pigmentation in those is just great, but the color palette could be definitely improved. Not to mention that the singular colors are quite expensive, so I still don't own every single shade. Because of that, I experiment a lot with the color schemes on my dolls. Here I planned to keep it in a grey scale at first, but then decided to add a bit of deep green to the shadows and then, on a total whim, I also added some magenta as a blushing and to the shading as well. It was a bit of an experiment, because normally bright magenta color wouldn't be my first choice for a dark character, but it did add this weird almost like color shifting vibe to the face and I really liked it. For the eyes I picked black scleras and very bright greyish irises. The 
Gulia has very sharp features, and I was a bit afraid that I wouldn't be able to make my character look sad, which was the main premise, and that she will end up looking evil or angry, which wouldn't be terrible, but not exactly what I intended. Luckily, adding a little shading and highlighting to the brows area did the trick and her face expression become satisfyingly miserable. I like painting some teeth visible from under the upper lip, and this girl got some too. But for this one I chose tiny and pointy teeth, a piranha style. She will be getting black hair in the end, so I tried to give her some brows too but she just pulls off the no brows look way too well, so lashes will have to suffice. With acrylics I created tiny dots of highlights in the eyes. I love drawing freckles on my dolls. I feel like they add character and some uniqueness to the person or creature that I'm creating. Though I usually skip them on more creepy projects and draw them only on those that are supposed to be cute or seductive looking. This one was neither of those two so I wanted to skip the freckles. But I couldn't, so just a few. I wasn't strong enough to resist. Okay then, the face-up was done. Here's some random Golia doll to show you how the new proportions and new face can change the original character into a completely different one. I covered the new face with a protective plastic wrap, and I cut my doll into pieces. I started with the legs. The legs had to go. She won't be needing them anymore. Also, her arms had to go, but just for now. I wanted to give this sad little girl more round shoulder posture. It worked with my cactus fairy, so I hoped it will work here as well. For that, the middle part of the torso also needed to say bye-bye. And her boobs too. Then I just had to take the sad leftovers of her body, smooth out all the rough edges, plastic seams, panties and factory numbers. I drilled holes in her arms and through her shoulder so I could place the wire here and reattach the arms to the torso in their new position. Later I cut the wire in two, which gave me more freedom in positioning those arms. I sanded all the parts with sanding sponges. You don't want any visible roughness on the surface, but you also don't want the surface to be glossy. Okay, sad little fish girl, time to put yourself together. I squeezed a piece of aluminium foil into the chest cavity and filled the rest of it with hot glue. Then I stuck the wire in and waited for the glue to cool down. After it did, I put the glue in the butt part and reconnected both pieces of torso and strengthened the connection with even more hot glue. I used super glue to place the arms in their new position, 
but I left the elbows and wrists mobile for now. With the power of friendship, I created a ball of epoxy and I moved on to the sculpting phase. I re-sculpted the stomach, the shoulders and the boobs. Then I started adding some details, like tummy rolls, belly button and shoulder blades. I wasn't 100% happy with the curvature of the spine, so I shaved the butt down a little bit, which I modified even further later, and I continued adding the clay. As you can see, I ran out of the pink one, so after almost three and a half years of customizing, I am finally working with the most common color of epoxy, grey. I added collarbones and some rib looking thingies, to make my girl a bit more creepy. And I also sculpted a set of gills on each side of her torso. Now let's take a small break from the doll, because to make her tail we need to have the base, at least part of it. The wooden brick is here only for the baking part, it won't be a part of the finished project, so I haven't glued the wire in. The wire itself will be the core of the rock our sad little girl will be sitting on. And on this wire with hot glue and aluminium foil, I created the basic shape for the rock. After that I pressed some Super Sculpey through my pasta machine and I covered the aluminium foil with those sheets of clay. Liquid Sculpey helped to bond the clay with the foil better. I textured the hell out of our rock and I added some spiky and some less spiky rock formations to give the whole piece more rough and dangerous vibe. I baked it in my oven, the time and temperature is always mentioned on the clay's package, and I could go back to our girl. Since the epoxy had time to cure completely, I could give the torso a good sanding, focusing mostly on the epoxy to plastic transitions. I started with the tail by twisting a long piece of wire attached to the doll's pelvis. Unfortunately, the crouch part broke, which made it a bit more difficult. But on the other hand, I could remove even more of the butt to make the curvature of the spine even nicer. While bending the wire, I was constantly checking it against the rock, so the tail would go nicely around it. Using hot glue, I attached the wire to the doll, and I thickened the tail's core with a lot of aluminium foil. To a little more messy part. To build an actual shape of the tail, I used Warbler thermoplastic. I heated some Warbler scraps with my heat gun and I covered the tail with it piece by piece, smoothing it out as I go. As you can see, it was still pretty rough, so I took bigger sheets of Warbler to cover it. Good enough. To blend the tail with the torso, I once again mixed some epoxy sculpt and started working on those hips and buns. Because I still wasn't satisfied with the arch of the back, I sculpted this weird structure on the doll's spine, for some back fins that I planned to add later. 
when the epoxy cured I smoothed the transitions again with the sanding sponges and I drilled the holes for the fins. So let's make those now! I used a technique that I developed while working on my Goldfish Mermaid. I started by cutting the shapes from Warblad Transpa art. I took the airbrush and I sprayed some black gradient at the base of each fin. Then I did the same with some color shifting paint. Using black and metallic dark green, I painted the rays on each fin by hand. And to top all of it, I mixed blue and red transparent paint to get a nice purple shade. Two last steps to close the paint sandwich, a color shifting and black gradient at the base. With all the fins painted and dry, I gave them some more flowiness by heating them up with the heat gun and shaping the waves with my fingers. I was constantly checking the shape with the doll and the rock to be sure that all the pieces will work together. At some point I decided to ditch the tiny back fins, cause they just didn't look good on the doll. But the rest of the fins still needed a bit more sturdiness. The UV resin makes the warbler fins harder, less flimsy and it protects the paint job, just what we need. I highly recommend checking my Goldfish Mermaid and Jellyfish Girl video if you like this technique for semi-transparent, hard and wavy fins. It may not be a huge deal, but I am quite proud of myself for coming up with this method. I put two layers of resin on both sides of each fin, curing it under an UV lamp. The resin was still a bit tacky to the touch, so I listened to some of my viewers' recommendations and cured it one last time submerged in a clear water. Thanks guys! That worked great! All I had to do next was to attach the fins to the tail. Voila! Looking nice so far, but I still had a lot of sculpting to do. Our little fish girl needed some scales after all. I mixed a small portion of epoxy and rolled many, many tiny balls that I added to the tail one by one from the end of the tail going all the way up to the human part of the mermaid. It took me two or even three days to finish, but I think it was worth the time. I also sculpted some scales on the shoulders and boobs, put the forearms and hands in place and created the spikes coming from the spine. And the sculpting face was done! To prepare the body for blushing, I had to secure the fence first. I could do it with some tape, but I chose liquid mask instead. When the masking was dry, I sprayed the tail with black and the human part with grey primer. And of course, with two layers of Mr. Super Clear varnish. The blushing was a bit tricky. It took me a while to make it look decent, but I kept on working until I was really happy. And I was, eventually.
Of course, I added a lot of freckles and, once again, made a huge mistake by starting to highlight the scales. So I had to repeat it on every single one of them. But with that done, I could finally remove the protective wrap, fix the gap on the neck and call the body blushing part done. After one last layer of sealant, I removed the masking from the fins. This took me way more time than I thought it would, but worked well in the end. With green color shifting paint, I painted her nails. And it was time to make this girl really sad. Time to make her cry, I mean. And the best way to make anyone cry is to use UV resin. Trust me. I cried a little too. So I'm not a huge fan of the tears on this side. I think the tears on this side are way better. But I tried to to remove them and I only made a huge hole in the face up right here which almost gave me a heart attack and uh, I was afraid that I won't be able to fix it but fortunately I somehow somehow managed to blend it out and I'm still not happy with the tears but I'm not gonna touch it anymore uh, it is what it is and yeah uh, if you use resin, a UV resin, on your face up, don't remove it after it cures, because <sighs> you will destroy your face up. You don't, you don't want to do it. Well, no one said that life will be easy. I covered the scales, eyes and lips with Liquitex gloss varnish, let it dry and it was time to give her some hair. I know that she is rocking the bold look, as always, but to be honest, I started thinking about this project because many of you were unhappy that I switched the black hair on my first mermaid for the white ones. So this one was supposed to be black haired from the start. Because I didn't want the hairstyle to be too voluminous, more like wet and slick, I thinned it down by cutting some of the non-visible parts way shorter than the rest. To create the wet look I used, well, water, duh, and a good amount of hair gel. And I sealed everything with a hairspray. And the doll was done and ready for her stand. But the stand was not yet ready for her. We had our rock, but we still needed a place to put it. I cut a square piece of XPS styrofoam and marked the rock's placement. Normally, to make the styrofoam more durable, I cover it with few layers of Vicol glue. But I totally forgot to restock. So I decided to use Warbler instead. Just for the sides. The bottom part I covered with EVA foam, which will protect my shelves from scratches. I know that contact cement melts the styrofoam, but I decided to risk just a thin layer of glue, cause it's still the best one for EVA foam. So we have the base, time to glue on our rock formation and some smaller rocks. I sprayed the whole thing with black and dry brushed few shades of grey acrylics on the rocky surfaces. 
The reef pieces I painted creamy with brown shading, cause I wanted them to look dead. For even more gloomy look, I glued a few skulls and bones here and there, which I 3D printed from the files that I found on the thingiverse.com. To create the seafloor, I mixed the rough terrain paste with the creamy yellow acrylics and spread it on the styrofoam. When it dries, it creates this uneven grainy texture that pops out beautifully after adding dark wash on top. As the last minute decision, I got the idea of gluing this red grass tufts, cause I thought they might look a bit like the sea urchins. Okay, the stand, the doll, the attachment wire piece, let's put those things together. And the Valentine's Day is coming, so she needs her boyfriend. But the project was still far from being done. Our sea creature needs the water. I prepared five sheets of plexiglass, from which I created a temporary tank for our siren. I attached the stand to the base of the tank and glued the walls tightly around it. I used hot glue and I tried my best to make everything airtight and therefore leak-proof. I prepared my epoxy resin, some measuring cups and resin pigments in the colors turquoise blue and amber yellow. I mixed the resin with the hardener 2 to 1 and ended up adding 2 drops of blue and 3 drops of yellow to each batch of the resin. By mixing the resin or silicone by hand, you will introduce a lot of air bubbles into it. Fortunately, I have a vacuum chamber that helps me to get rid of those nasty suckers. You can see the bubbles forming on the surface. After a while, the resin is air-free, nice and clear. I only have two measuring cups that unfortunately hold only like 250 ml of liquid, so I had to make 12 batches separately. That was a bummer, cause the resin ended up a lot darker than I anticipated, though my husband called it a happy accident, cause it made the water look more murky, so kinda suitable for a creepy project. So, here is our little girl after three days of curing, and of course I stumbled upon one more off-camera fail. After like two or three hours uh, after pouring the resin, I noticed that the level of the water is starting to decrease. So I looked for some leaks and I couldn't find any. And then I noticed that the resin got under the base and started to push the uh, whole doll, whole figurine up. Um, so it wasn't good, 
because I, if I wouldn't notice it and it would cure, I would end up with this weird sandwich of water that will be way too shallow, a stand and a thick layer of resin that would have to be removed and it would be just a big waste. <clears throat> uh, so, I noticed that it was because I glued the stand to the bottom with just a piece of tape and it just didn't hold well. So I had to pour the resin back to the plastic cups, uh, clean everything, remove the whole doll from the tank and then put it back, but this time by gluing it on with a hot glue, so, <clears throat> so hopefully it would hold better and it happily did. So, so yeah, I didn't record it because it was too messy and this doll is very heavy and very big so it was it would be really hard to record but yeah that was the problem i'm happy that it has been solved eventually i wanted to make a winter scenery with this one after all it's still winter here in poland so when the resin was more or less cured, I made some short walls on the surface here and there and filled the space between them with clear resin. It will hopefully create some cool looking ice sheets. 24 hours later, I could finally disassemble the plexiglass tank and release my not so little diorama. It required some elbow grease, but with a little help of heat gun to melt the hot glue, I managed to remove the walls without damaging the resin cube. Cleaning up the surface of the water was a bit more problematic. Now I know that using plasticine as the walls for the ice wasn't the best idea. It required a lot of time, patience, scrubbing and rubbing with alcohol. In the end, I wasn't able to remove the plasticine completely, but I did my best and I hoped that the next step will somehow cover this disaster. To make our diorama truly wintry, I sprayed the ice sheets white and covered them with crystal snow paste. Here and there I also added the liquid frost. The imperfections of the water surface I decided to fix with a layer of water texture paste. I also added a little bit of foam around the fence, tail, rock and ice sheets. I ended up scraping it off eventually cause I didn't really like the way it looked when it cured. Future me needs to learn how to use those materials to create more realistic water surface. But for now, this 3.5 kg project is finally finished. It has been a journey, that's for sure. For such a simple project that I thought it would be, it definitely cost me some grey hair. I really like how the siren turned out, especially her color scheme. The tears on her right cheek could have been executed better, but it taught me a few things so I am not totally disappointed. I feel like the stand doesn't meet my full expectations. I'm kinda bummed out that the water ended up so dark that you barely can see the doll's tail, but it's also a lesson for the future. In the end, my feelings are mixed, but I'm still happy that I did this project. And I believe it is not the worst as for my second resin diorama. I hope that each of you will be able to find something you like in this video. 
Let me know in the comments what do you think about this sad and creepy fishy. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing with the bell if you haven't already, to be notified of my future projects. And there will be more creepy ones this year, so there's a lot to wait for. Also, a lot of you asked me about how you can support me uh, outside YouTube, so now you can do it by buying me a virtual coffee at coffee.com. All your support helps me ton to pursue this passion as a career and to share this journey with you. I am very, very grateful for all donations, views, likes, shares, subs, and of course comments. Thank you guys for watching and see you soon! Jiggly, 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 jiggly.